Well, praise the Lord. Let's give God praise. Yeah. Very good. Amen. And we will continue to celebrate God because He is the same God, the same God who opened up that Red Sea, that same God is whom we serve today. And when He closed that Red Sea, the enemies of the Israelites and the enemies of our soul shall and will be drowned. But we need to tap into something. And so I want to continue with the teaching on the law versus grace. The law versus grace. That is right. You know what? Let me just bring it up here and put here law versus grace. Let's just put this in a different uh, kind of uh, setting. Just a minute. Yeah, let me just put that in a different kind of setting. You're going to hear something very powerful this morning, all right, or this afternoon, wherever you are watching from. I say wherever you are watching from. Amen. Where? What color should we put this? Let me just see here. Yeah, let me just do it the same like that. Here we go. Law versus grace. Where shall we put it? Let's put it over here. Amen. Okay, great. We are in for a treat today. Hallelujah. The heading that you see over here, why can I not be free? The simple explanation for spiritual freedom is to begin to walk in the Spirit. Uh-huh. You see, when we think we have to kind of be perfect and we've got to do everything right, and that's when we feel, yeah, I can now maybe go to a Christian gathering or I can perhaps now spend time with God. That is the biggest deception of the devil to keep people away from God. God's word says, come to me just the way you are, Isaiah 1, chapter 1, you'll find it there, verse 18 or so. Come to me just the way you are. Even though your sin is as red as scarlet, I will make it as white as snow and so on and so forth. We're going to crush the devil's tactics today. Amen. And so legalism, like I haven't done this, so I cannot gather with God or be in his presence. Uh, you know, I haven't done that yet, so I cannot be acceptable by God. But when I get things better, then I will come and gather with the saints of God or joining our media church, Apostolic Inside Ministries. You see, that kind of thought pattern is exactly what the devil wants you and I to accept because then he can bind us to restrictions and being conscious of our shortcomings. Now, if you want dominion, let me take you to Romans chapter 6, verse 14. Oh, you've got to hear the word of the Lord here. Romans chapter 6, verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. Now, reverse that verse. When you're under grace, you have dominion over the shortcomings or the shortfall or whatever you want to say of the flesh. If you want to exercise your dominion, then get into the zone or the throne zone of God's grace. And 
do not pick on yourself. Well, I haven't read my Bible today, so I'm not a good Christian. It's got nothing to do with that. Just because you read your Bible twice a day, does that make you a better Christian? It's got nothing to do with that. It's all to do with what Christ Jesus has done for you and I. Now, uh, I want to read that, and I made a note here. Uh, yeah, let me go there. Uh, Romans 5, verse 8. I need to just back up everything with Scripture. That's the way God has wired me. But God demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more now will we be uh, justified through His blood that Christ Jesus was raised from the dead? Here it is. God loves or loved us whilst we were still full of nonsense. <laughs> God loved us whilst we were still uh, sinners. Anybody in this hour who tries to do things completely right, that's a wonderful attitude, but you can put yourself in bondage. Whilst you and I are in this flesh, we will not be able to be perfect. The only time we will be perfected when perfection comes and imperfection disappears. Hallelujah. You see, you have to understand uh, that we are not saved by our works. If we were saved by our works, you would feel obligated. I need to do this and do that. And then God will accept me more. No, God accepts you with your mistakes. God accepts you with sinful habits. Now, I know somebody may not necessarily uh, think, how is this possible? I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to your neighbor. See, God accepted you and I whilst we were full of mistakes and we still make mistakes. You see, when you gather with the Word of God, when you gather with sitting under the teachings of God, when you gather with the saints, you demonstrating you have a need. God, I have a need. For more of you. See, when we gather, uh -huh, we're not gathering because we feel good about ourselves, that we've done things right with God. And I think that is why a lot of churches are, are empty. See, we, we don't come to church or gather with the body of Christ because we feel we have done things right by God. If that is the case, how often will people stay away to come to the house of God? The Bible says, I was glad when I went to the house of God. Hallelujah. Why? God bless you, Kim, and thank you for all your prayers for my Lizzie and my wife. Thank you, thank you, thank you. She's doing good. Friday is a big day where they will assess. Uh, well, they've done the assessment. They uh, deciding uh, the procedure to move forward. So, so God says, "Come to me just the way you are, just the way you are." See, I don't have to quickly read my Bible, say a quick prayer, and uh, 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 jumping up and down and praise and hallelujah, praise the Lord. Now I'm ready for a church gathering. No. It does not work that way. It does not work that way. Because if we try and be self-pleasers to feel acceptable before God, then we are going to move under the law 
and go backwards under legalism and we start picking on ourselves and our self-worth and our self-esteem becomes totally reduced. And so, you know what the next step is? Romans 8 verse 1. People will fall under condemnation. And that's why God put in his word, Romans 8 verse 1. He says, for now there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. For through Christ Jesus, I've been set free from the law of sin and death. Uh -huh. See, what is sin when we under the law. Let me read this verse. Uh, I wrote it down. 1 Corinthians 15, 56. And I'm just about to close, okay? 1 Corinthians. Uh, I was about to leave. And uh, the Holy Spirit just pulled me back and says, no, you need to get this word out. So I'm just simply obeying the Lord and... Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 56. The sting of death is sin. You know, they are precious people. They love God. They love God. But they feel they're under that constant harassment of a sting of death. Of, um, in other words, uh, a death to... Uh, uh, some people don't feel so joyful. And, and, and so the enemy tried to... I'm going to make up my own word under this unction to function. He tries to deaden our joy with heaviness. And it's like, oh man, uh, let me just duck again because it's another arrow coming and, and, and you, you know, of condemnation and of guilt and all that nonsense. Listen, Jesus Christ died for you and I. Uh, Romans uh, 5 verse 8 says, whilst we were still sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. That's how much God loves you. You know, somebody says, yeah, but, you know, I'm smoking and I'm having some wine and, and I'm having this and that and, and I still like dancing. And I don't care. All I'm saying as, your, as a preacher, keep serving God. Somebody says to me one day, Am I allowed, can I skip smoking? I said, you know, you can smoke as much as you want to. It's between you and God. Who am I? Are you with me? Somebody got so mad with me uh, because I, uh, I served this couple. They were just living together. And uh, I will uh, allow, you know, uh, the person to sing a song uh, as well. And, uh, you know, do a special in church. And, yeah, but how can you do this? Oh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. <laughs> you know why I did that? Because the more they connect with the things of God, the greater opportunity God has to talk to them and them being able to hear the law says, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that. It's not my responsibility to tell people what not to do and what, uh, you know, uh, how to behave. I've just been called to release. I've just been called to release the word of God, you know. And, and it's the goodness of God that led this couple to repentance. At some point, they asked me to uh, do their wedding for them. Isn't God good? It was a whole year, most probably, if not a little bit longer, but I think about a year or so. Uh, the point I'm making is this. Whilst we were sinners, God put up with us. How? Jesus Christ died for our sins. Jesus Christ uh, became our very sacrifice, his flesh was nailed to Calvary, which means his flesh, by the way, represents uh, the type of the law. He, the flesh of Jesus represents the legalism of the law and judgment 
and condemnation and uh, all that non uh, that negative stuff of the flesh. He nailed that to the cross. Hallelujah. And whilst we were sinners, he took care of your flesh and my flesh. Now somebody says, Preacher, how is that possible? Because the Bible says no good thing dwells in the flesh. Exactly. That's why Jesus Christ exchanged his flesh for our flesh. Yes. And he says, now put no confidence in your flesh. Because I have become your crucifixion of your flesh. Yes. And watch this now. Watch this now. Then he says that uh, as he is, so are you. Now, his flesh, watch this, was given up for our flesh. Now your flesh is called the body of Christ. Wow, you mean I'm the body of Christ? Absolutely. Yeah, but I do this and I do this. That's the problem. That's the problem. We must not think like that, even though you might be doing it. Keep loving God, serving God. He will give you the grace to exercise dominion over the thing you're not supposed to do. Don't let that harass you. Keep serving him. Somebody says to me, hey, preacher, you'll go into a bar? Of course. You know what? I took a whole home group, a home group uh, uh, leaders, yes? At one stage, we used to go to the bar to prepare our teaching for that week. <laughs> Absolutely. You better believe it. Yes. So the bartender will come to us and say, uh, excuse me, you guys, uh, uh, why are you guys doing this? Oh, what a wonderful opportunity. I said, you know, we always expect people that are, you know, classified as, you know, labeled as sinners to come to church, but the church needs to go to sinners. The point I'm making is this. I'm not ashamed of the gospel that I carry. It is the power of God unto salvation. And this power of the gospel that I carry is mature enough to take care of himself called Christ Jesus. And I am not going to isolate what Jesus has done from people who needs what he has already done for them. That's right, Kim, breaking those chains of injustices against people. Amen, my sis. So, so here's the thing. If we can just get it in our minds that the dominion over sin or the, the sting of that sinful habit that wants to sting us or sting you with condemnation, guilt, you're not worthy. Why? Look at me, I'm miserable. That's the devil's tactic. Whilst we were full of defects, Christ Jesus died for us. And you know what? To crown everything, this is a fallen fleshly body. And God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Ghost, uh, uh, deposited themselves inside of this body. It's now called the body, the temple of the Holy Ghost in whom God dwells. Can you believe it? And yet there's no good thing that dwells in the flesh. Why? Because Jesus Christ died for this flesh and he provided righteousness. But now I need faith to believe that I'm okay. As long as I just keep thinking about him and serve him to the best of your ability. And if you make a mistake, join the club. I have a register. My name is right there at the top. Not one of us is perfect. I want to really close now in one minute. Help me, Lord. <laughs> I hope this spoke to somebody today. Romans 6, 14. Sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Go out there today, beloved, and take your dominion and exercise it in trusting that Jesus Christ God bless you, Lorraine. Trust God that the finished work of Calvary, when Jesus says, it is finished. Yes, he paid the price. 
There's nothing you and I can do. Listen, I can read my Bible 24-7. It doesn't make me a better Christian. I am a son of God in spite of me, but because of Jesus Christ. Let your faith be boosted today. Pray for us Friday, this Friday, we're going to have a baptism of fire. Baptism of fire. And I believe that God is going to do something unique on Friday. And if you're in the Mount Vernon, Illinois area, it's on Facebook as well, I advertise. I'm going to preach and teach and demonstrate the power of God. If there's a time where we need the power of God in action, it is now. More than ever before. We can talk until we blew in the face. But oh, demonstrate the power of God. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power, power, power. So pray for us. God bless you. Thank you. Now I can go to my appointment or commitment. I could not leave. I was on my way. And something turned me around and says, no, you're going to do this broadcast first. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. And remember, come to him just the way you are. Then he gets all the glory. Serve him with all your mistakes. And he will take care. Until next time, remember, Jesus is Lord. Thank you and God bless you as you keep praying for my wife. Amen. Holy kiss to all of you. Bye now.